Hi, my name is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast of the New Testament. I'll be using as the text the King James Version, along with the Joseph Smith Translation. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll also be using quotes from general authorities of the Church, the Apostles and Prophets, and BYU professors and others, and uh, every word out of the Scriptures themselves. So if you're ready for a really detailed analysis of the New Testament, you've come to the right place. Welcome. Hi there, welcome back. This will be for 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The heading reads, Desire spiritual gifts, tongues and prophecy compared. Prophecy is the greater gift. Ye may all prophesy and covet to prophesy. Verse 1, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Prophecy is greater than charity, because in order to prophesy, a man must first have the pure love of Christ in his soul, and then he must attune himself to the Holy Spirit so as to receive the spirit of revelation and of prophecy. Chiefly, the gift of prophecy is to know by revelation from the Holy Ghost of the divine sonship of our Lord. And that was by Joseph Smith. Verse 2, For he that speaketh in another tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Bruce R. McConkie said, The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That is, every person who receives revelation so that he knows, independent of any other source of the divine sonship of the Savior, has by definition, and in the very nature of things, the spirit of prophecy and is a prophet. A true prophet is one who has the testimony of Jesus, one who knows by, re- by personal revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and that he was to be or has been crucified for the sins of the world, one to whom God speaks and who recognizes the still small voice of the Spirit. A true prophet is one who holds the holy priesthood, who is a legal administrator, who has power and authority from God to repent or to represent him on earth. A true prophet is a teacher of righteousness to whom the truths of the gospel have been revealed and who presents them to his fellow men so they can become heirs of salvation in the highest heaven. A true prophet is a witness, a living witness, one who knows and one who testifies. Such a one, if need be, foretells the future and reveals to men what the Lord reveals to him. Verse 4, He that speaketh in another tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you, except I shall speak to you either by revelation, or by knowledge, or by prophesying, or by doctrine? And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? So likewise ye except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, forasmuch as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in another tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in another tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say, Amen, at at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? For thou verily givest thanks well, but for the other is not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my my understanding, that by my voice I might teach others also than ten thousand words in another tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will not hear, that will not hear me, saith the Lord. 
Wherefore tongues are for a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church is come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not will they not say that, that ye are mad? But if ye but if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned he is convinced of all and is judged of all and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest and so falling down on his face he will worship god and report that god is in you with of a truth how is it then brethren when ye come together every one of you hath a half a psalm hath a doctrine hath a tongue hath a revelation hath an interpretation let all things be done edifying if any man speak in another tongue let it be by two or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Be not so curious about tongues. Do not speak in tongues except there be an interpreter present. The ultimate design of tongues is to speak to foreigners, and if persons are very anxious to display their intelligence, let them speak to such in their own tongues, that is, in the tongues of the foreigners. That was by Joseph Smith. Any man that has the Holy Ghost can speak of the things of God in his own tongue, as well as to speak in another, for faith comes not by signs, but by hearing the word of God. Anything is taught by the gifts of tongues, it is not to be received for doctrine. Speak not in the gifts of in the gift of tongues without understanding it, or without interpretation. The devil can speak in tongues, the adversary will come with him with his work. He can tempt all classes, can speak in English or Dutch, let no one speak in tongues unless he interpret, except by the consent of the one who is placed to preside, then he may discern or interpret, or another may. It's interesting, uh, as we talk about uh, speaking in tongues, that we often think about speaking in different languages, but also speaking in tongues might be where we speak English and the hearer, hearer understands the English, uh, but they understand exactly the meaning of what's being said, not necessarily just the words that are mentioned. So that although my delivery may not be very good and the words that I might select for, for giving a talk may not be very good, but through the Spirit, the person can understand what is, what is meant. And so that might also be the gift of tongues that uh, hearing and understanding what's being said, not just translating from one language to another. Verse 29, let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Now Paul comes to the spirit directed climax, let the prophets speak. We may all prophesy, covet to prophecy. Prophecy stands supreme, the greatest of all the gifts of the spirit. Prophecy is revelation. It is testimony. It is spirit speaking to spirit. It is knowing by revelation that Jesus is the Lord, that salvation is in Christ, that he has redeemed us by his blood. Prophecy is walling in paths of truth and righteousness. It is living and doing the will of him whose we are. And in its final and perfect form, known as the more sure word of prophecy, it consists in a man's knowing that he is sealed up unto eternal life by revelation and the spirit of prophecy through the power of the holy priesthood. Now it's by, this is all by Bruce R. McConkie. And while one prophet speaks, all others present shall give rapt attention to his words, that they partaking of the same spirit with which the speaker is endowed may judge the testimony and doctrine to be good. Thus he that preacheth and he that receiveth understandeth one another, and both are edified and rejoiced together. And that was last part was from dex, uh, section 50 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Verse 30, If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, not uh, that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Bruce R. McConkie said, The true churches or should be made up of prophets without number. Every man should be a prophet for his family and for those over whom he is called to preside in the church and kingdom of God on earth. But there is no but there is to be no diversity of views, no differences of opinion among the prophets. A prophet is a prophet only because he receives revelation from the Holy Ghost and is in tune with the Spirit of God. Anarchy is foreign to a heaven-sent organization. The Lord's house is a house of order and not a house of confusion. And so the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. There is only one presiding prophet on earth at any one time, and he is the president of the church. All other prophets are subject to him and his direction. There is not now on earth, and there shall not be, as long as the earth shall stand, or there is one man on the face thereof, a prophet who is not subject to and whose acts are not governed by the presiding prophet. That was by Bruce R. McConkie.
Verse 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to rule, to be under obedience, as also that saith, but to be but to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to rule in the church. May women speak in church? Yes, in the sense of teaching, counseling, testifying, exhorting, and the like. No, in the sense of assuming rule over the church as such, and in attempting to give direction as to how God's affairs on earth shall be regulated. A woman has no right to found or organize a church. God never sent them to do it. That's by Joseph Smith. Paul is here telling sisters they are subject to the priesthood. That is not their province to rule and reign. And that was by Bruce R. McConkie. Verse 36. What? Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. That's the uh, unwritten order of things there, to do things decently and in order. Elder Boyd K. Packer gave a talk called The Unwritten Order of Things, and I would commend that to you. It's really good. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter, and we'll see you next time. Bye.